We gather together this day in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading for this seventh Sunday of Easter comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath's day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. This past Thursday was the Feast of Ascension, 40 days after Easter. And I posted on my Facebook page a, uh, a little meme from uh, Lutheran School of Theology in Chicago that said tomorrow, I posted it on Wednesday, tomorrow is the Feast of the Ascension. For those who don't know what that means, that was the day when Jesus started working from home. The Ascension. 40 days after the resurrection, 40 days after Jesus. We heard the story of the ascension in the book of Acts, as I had read for our lesson today, that Jesus had appeared, had been with his disciples for 40 days. They had seen him repeatedly during that time, had seen the risen Christ. But on that 40th day, he led them out to the Mount of Olives outside of Jerusalem, and it said he was taken from them, and they saw him no more. From that point on, there are only two other times recorded in Scripture where his followers saw Jesus. One of those was several years later, when Paul, who then was Saul, was on his way to Damascus, and he had a vision of the risen Christ. Saul was on his way to Damascus under orders from the chief priest to arrest the, uh, the Christians, the believers in Jesus. And on that Damascus road, he saw the risen Christ, and he heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then also commissioning him to go and to spread the good news. Paul, Saul, looked at that as his commission to be an apostle, to carry forward the mission of the Twelve. And then many, many, many years later, probably about 60 or maybe even 70 years later, John, the last of the apostles, was in exile on an island called Patmos in the Mediterranean Sea. He'd been exiled there by the Roman officials for preaching the gospel. And he, too, had a vision of the risen Christ. He saw Jesus. He hadn't seen him for, lo, those many years, but he saw the risen Christ. 
And that vision became the basis of his writing the, the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible. But other than those two instances, the disciples did not see Jesus anymore after the ascension. He was gone, at least gone in a physical manifestation from their experience. As many of you know, uh, my father passed away uh, six months ago, last November. Since then, my wife and I have been going to my parents' house and cleaning out the house. For many, many years, my father collected Lionel trains. He had a good-sized layout in our basement. I remember that, uh, growing up, the trains and then the, the layout in the basement. Several years ago, with my father's own declining health, he dismantled the layout, but he still kept a couple, uh, couple ovals of, of track, would still run the trains from time to time. And one of the last things I've had to do in cleaning out his house is to get rid of the trains. We were able to, to give them to a, a fellow collector, a, a friend of my dad's, uh, who, who took the trains. But it was hard. We did that yesterday because it, there was a finality about that. My father is gone and getting rid of his trains kind of put that final stamp, uh, uh, a final word that indeed he is gone and I will not see him again, at least not in this life. Is that what the Ascension is all about? The disciples kind of coming to grips with Jesus being gone, Jesus' death? No, that's not how we in the church understand the Ascension, even though there were not those physical manifestations, those physical appearances of Jesus, other than the two that I mentioned. The church always has had a strong understanding that indeed Jesus is still alive. And the idea of the ascension is that Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still present with the gathered community. The church says that he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, does that mean he's far away? He's in heaven, far removed from us in our lives on the earth? No. 500 years ago, in the, the Reformation and some of the, the disputes of the Reformation, there was the question of the sacrament, Holy Communion. And Martin Luther uh, believed and taught in the, the real presence that Christ was truly bodily present present in, with, and under the bread and wine. Now another reformer, Zwickley, contended that, no, it says that he ascended into heaven. He's at the right hand of the Father, so he can't be present in the bread and the wine, uh, at least not physically. He can be symbolically present, but not physically present. Well, Luther answered the criticisms of Zwingli by saying, well, where is the right hand of God? The right hand of God is not in some heaven light years away. It's not far away. The right hand of God is everywhere. When it says that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, it doesn't mean that he's far away in heaven removed from this earth, it means that wherever God is, there Jesus, God the Son, is also. It's not about Jesus' removal. It's that indeed Jesus is present, is truly present in, with, and under the bread and wine within the gathered community where two or more are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. And I think in this day with what we're going through, that Jesus indeed is truly present when we're still unable to gather together physically, but he is indeed present as we gather together virtually. 
where two or more are gathered together via virtual medium, I believe that Jesus indeed is truly present. But he is present not only in the sacrament, in the bread and the wine, but he's also present in the community. Next week will be the day of Pentecost, the story of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, that God continues to be present with his people through the gift of the Spirit, the tongues of fire appearing on people's head, the rush of the mighty wind, the birth of the Christian church. That indeed, God is present, empowering the church sending the church out in mission. God is not removed. Jesus isn't gone. He's not working from home. He indeed is present in each and every one of us through his Holy Spirit, the Spirit that proceeds from the Father and the Son and empowers and fills each and every one of his followers. But not only at the the right hand of God, which is everywhere, not only in the Holy Spirit that empowers the church. Ascension points to the message that Jesus will come again. Jesus will come again. He will return. That's a a message that indeed he is not gone. He's not dead. But indeed, he is living, and there will be that day when he returns. He will come again to be with his people. He's not gone. He may be gone physically, but there will be that day when he will return in a physical manifestation. That he is still living, that he is still powerful. Lo, I am with you always until the end of the age which were Jesus' last words to the disciples as recorded in Matthew's Gospel, that indeed, even though physically he may not be with us, spiritually he continues to be present, and there will be that physical return at the last, at the last days, whether it's our last days when we go to meet Jesus in his eternal kingdom or at the end of the ages when he returns, in glory we will see him we will touch him we will know him as he is as he always appeared indeed with those marks those physical manifestations those physical marks of indeed who he was in this life in in the world so the ascension doesn't mean that jesus is simply gone it means that maybe we don't see him physically. The disciples did not see him physically as they did, but he is still present. He's present at the right hand of the Father throughout all the creation. He's present in, with, and under the bread and wine of Holy Communion. He's present in the Spirit in the gathered community, and indeed he will be present again physically for all of us when he returns again in glory. And so, indeed, it's not simply that Jesus is working from home, but he is still with us. He is still guiding us, he's still leading us, and he is still surrounding us with his spirit and his blessing. And to that, the people of God can say, Amen and Amen. And now may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.